the last carboxylic acid derivative that I want to talk about are nitriles. So nitriles don't look like a carboxylic acid derivative, but they're actually made from a carboxylic acid derivative. So you can make a nitrile from a primary amide by just removing the elements of water, two hydrogens and an oxygen, to form a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. Uh, you, you need strong dehydrating agents like thionyl chloride, P2O5, or phosphorus oxychloride. All of those will accomplish the dehydration of a primary amide to make the carbon triple bond that gives you a nitrile. The nitrile or the cyanide group is very similar to a carbonyl group in that we have carbon which is bonded to nitrogen uh, through a sigma bond and in this case a couple of pi bonds. Uh, the carbonyl is a sigma bond and one pi bond. But because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, uh, we get this polar group and we have a slight positive charge on the carbon. Now what this is trying to show is that we could we could conceivably draw a resonance structure by moving this pair of electrons in, in one of the pi bonds up onto the nitrogen uh, to form. Uh, it doesn't form, but another resonance structure shows where we have a positively charged carbon and a negatively charged nitrogen. This does contribute some to the overall structure, and we have a very a moderately polar bond with the positive part of that polar bond being at the carbon, thus carbon is electrophilic. Another way to make nitriles is by displacement of a leaving group using the cyanide group as a nucleophile. So we just simply do an SN2 reaction on something like an alkyl bromide using a cyanide anion. We'll just go at the backside attack, knock off the bromine, as a bromide and get our uh, nitrile. Notice now we've formed a carbon carbon bond uh, in this reaction, so this should go into your carbon carbon bond forming toolbox. Just as we could make a nitrile from a primary amide, we can hydrolyze nitriles to form primary amides. Uh, we have to use fairly strong conditions. This is a little bit of a stubborn reaction, but we can do it. Uh, it is convenient as well because you can take a nitrile and you can hydrolyze it to the amide. You actually need a full equivalent of acid or base to get all the way to the carboxylic acid or the carboxylate. So it's convenient that you can go under catalytic conditions and stop at the amide or force the reaction by using a full equivalent uh, to get all the way to the carboxylic acid. Now the reason you need the full equivalent, remember, is because uh, in the case of under acid conditions, your leaving group ends up being ammonia, NH3, and it's going to pick up any acid, so you have to make sure that you have enough acid for this reaction to go to completion. So let's take a look at the mechanism. We're going to take a look at the mechanism under basic conditions, so using hydroxide. So uh, as always, I have something here in blue that's going to be my electrophile, something in red that's my nucleophile. So the first reaction is not a acid-base reaction or a proton transfer. It's a nucleophilic uh, addition to the electrophilic carbon. So we just push our arrows and we get this intermediate. Now that's gonna be a strong base and it's just gonna pull off a, a proton from water. And we reform our hydroxide, which can pull off the proton on the oxygen, right? And then we get a rearrangement uh, and further deprotonation to form our primary amide reaction. So if we take a look at this reaction, we have a nucleophilic addition followed by a series of proton transfer reactions to give us our amide. Now what I'm going to do here is under basic conditions, we have this, a similar series of reactions. We can hydrolyze under acidic conditions and you're going to do this by doing a proton transfer followed by a nucleophilic addition 
followed by a series of proton transfers to get to our final product. So give this a try. Uh, the next slide, which is hidden, uh, is the mechanism for this reaction. And hopefully at this point, you'll see that when we're under acidic conditions, the first thing you want to do is a proton transfer reaction. You want to protonate something. Look at that lone pair of electrons there on the nitrogen. So if we were to protonate this thing, we would then make it a better electrophile, which could then be attacked by neutral water rather than under basic conditions where we had the strong hydroxide as our nucleophile. Uh, in this series of reactions, I'm including all steps. Even under normal conditions, we might say proton shift, uh, to, and in this case, all proton transfers are shown in this mechanism. So that's it. Uh, now I just want to talk about, here's a couple of good questions that you might see on a midterm uh, or assignment. So now propose a sequence of reactions to carry out the following transformation. Look at what's going on here. We're basically inserting, it looks like we're inserting a CH2 group in between this CH2 group and the carbonyl group. In fact, what we end up doing, you guys now have all the toolbox of reactions that you need to elongate this carboxylic acid. Now, you're going to have to use a little bit of chemistry that you learned in Organic 1 uh, to get from here to here, but you should be able to figure it out. The first part of the chemistry you're going to use is something we learned this year. Uh, okay, so you're probably going to want to reduce this carboxylic to an alcohol. Then you might want to convert that alcohol to something that's more convenient so that you can uh, elongate it using the SN2 reaction and install a cyanide, or what you would then uh, hydrolyze a couple of times to get back to the carboxylic acid. Here's another good question, which I have not shown you this reaction, but you should actually be able to figure it out at least uh, to get to what we call the enol. So here's our electrophile. This is a strong nucleophile. Uh, it's going to add and see if you can figure this out. Use Mr. Google if you have to. Here's a good question I like. I, I, I don't expect you to know this particular wine, ro wine rib ketone synthesis. Uh, Although you can figure it out, it should make sense to you now if you follow it, uh, follow the pushing of the arrows. But why not just use an acid halide and a grid near reagent uh, to make a ketone? Why go through this complicated mechanism uh, and reaction to go from a carbonyl containing group that has a good leaving group to a ketone, why why could we not just use an acyl halide? Now the last thing I want to talk about, uh, we've learned all of these reactions. And if you take a look, uh, the link for this page is in the notes below. Every one of these reactions has exactly the same mechanism. That's either uh, nucleophilic additions or pro proton transfers. The mechanism is the same for all of these. So take a look at that and convince yourself that the Fischer esterification, the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester, the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an amide, the acid catalyzed formation of imines, the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of imines, and the acid catalyzed formation of anhydrides from carboxylic acids. So all of these follow the same mechanism. Take a look. So that's it uh, for now. Uh, the slides afterwards just show a bunch of uh, different schematics of the reactions you learned. So thank you.